All right, guys, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching. No intros on this video. We are jumping just right in. Today's video is about creating a remote user VPN in Unify. But unlike a lot of tutorials that I've seen uh, online and on YouTube, we will not just uh, create a VPN and uh, go home. We will also uh, give some emphasis to the security portion of, of this process. And I'm talking about creating firewall rules. If, if you're interested in doing VPN in a secure way, just keep on watching. I'm going to do it in a slightly different way uh, than maybe you're used to. So we'll jump right in. We have a UDM in a remote site that I am managing. I've gotten permission to demo on it. Let's jump right over to the network controller. We will do everything on the new settings menu. Although I do personally prefer the classic menu still, this is where Ubiquity wants us to go and uh, what Ubiquity wants us to get used to using, so we'll do it right here. By the way, a few settings in Remote User VPN that were previously only available in the Classic menu, so you had to switch uh, to the Classic menu in order to complete these settings. Right now, they are all already on the New Settings menu. We will go to the Networks tab right here. You know what? Before that, we'll jump over to the Advanced Settings and enable our Radius profile. You will probably also see a default profile in your uh, UDM or controller. Just click on it, enable it, and provide a secret. I'm going to use a very simple one. You should definitely, definitely use a complex one, especially if you're doing this, you're doing this in production. I'm just using one, two, three, four, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Hey, moving on to uh, radius settings. Nothing you should touch over here. Radius users. Let's create a, a, a test user to use. We'll call it just VPN. Again, I'm using a very simple password. You should definitely use a complex password and also create a user for every one of your real users that you want to connect via VPN. Don't use a generic user. All right, so we've created a user. Make sure that the Radius server is enabled and click on Apply Settings. That's the first, uh, the first thing that we need to cover. Now we can go ahead and go to the Networks tab right here and click on Add New Network. We'll call it VPN for the lack of a better idea and click on the VPN settings right here and select remote access. That's the type of VPN that we're configuring right now. Now, we are forced, we are forced to use L2TP, although L2TP is for years now is already considered not a very secure protocol. We don't have any other choice. I think Unify needs to do better in this. All other serious uh, networking vendors have already started using uh, SSL VPN years ago. This is something that I think should change in the future. So choose L2TP, pre-shared key. Again, use a complex one. I'm using a simple one just for the demonstration purposes. You will need to select your public IP address. If you have several, then you will need, then you, se you will select the one that's relevant for you. If you have a static IP, that's great. If not, I really think you should be using a dynamic DNS so that the clients will, be ha will have some sort of a, 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 a pointer to your UDM. If you haven't watched our video on Dynamic DNS, I'll put a link to it in the top right corner. Moving on, user access, you will have this default selected right here. And as you can see, our user uh, is already populated right here. Moving on to the advanced, I'm going to select uh, 172.16.1.1 as my subnet, just so I will have a clear a clear identification. If I see a client with a 172.16, I know that's a VPN user. Name server, you can leave on auto. My preference is just to select 8.8 and 1.1.1. And one more, one last thing, I do uh, recommend enabling MSChat version 2. L2TP, as I said, is not a very secure protocol, but if we're forced to use it, then the minimum we can do is to enable MSChat version 2. By the, way, that's a, by the way, that's a setting that used to be only in the classic menu, so you had to switch to the classic menu in order to enable it. Now they've placed it right here, which is great. Click on Add Network. And in fact, right now, if we go ahead and create a, a VPN connection in our a, a client a, a machine, we will be able to connect to our a, a UDM a device. In fact, let's open up my test Windows 10 device. And on Windows 10, all you have to do in order, in order to create the VPN connection is go to the network icon right here in the uh, lower uh, right corner, right click it, open network and internet settings, go to the VPN tab right here and add a VPN connection. VPN provider, you don't have a choice. VPN connection, let's call it Unify. 
I'm going to uh, place in my dynamic DNS address because I don't have a static IP address. VPN type, L2TP with pre-shared key, and this is the place where you will put your pre-shared key that you have uh, configured in the last step. Let's give our username and password right here and click on save. Now, I'm going to try to connect to the VPN. And looks like we're connected, but my success criteria when I'm connecting to the VPN is to be able to pin the access point I have in this remote site. As you can see, I have an access point right here with this IP address, 182.168.80.80, sorry, dot two. Let's open up a command prompt and see if I'm, able, if, if I'm able to ping it. Now, what should happen right now is that I won't be able to ping it. This is because of the firewall rule portion that I've talked about, but let's try. And in fact, you can see that I am not getting a ping reply. And this, at this point, I will switch back to my UDM and create firewall rules to, uh, to manifest, to allow these connections. This is not something that you will need to do by default. But as you can see, I have created a rule that will block inter-VLAN routing. If you haven't watched my video on Unify firewall rules, again, I really recommend that you watch this. I think that the method that I'm uh, suggesting over there is something that, that makes sense and allows easier management of firewall rules. If we go to the firewall rules in this remote site that I am managing and go to the LAN portion, you can see that I have a rule that will block inter-VLAN routing. What this rule does basically is block every internal IP address as a source and destination. As you can see, if the source is within this group, and I'll show this group in a second, if the source is in this group and the destination is again in this group, just block it. What this is basically doing is it just blocks uh, routing uh, between VLANs, and if I want to allow uh, traffic between VLANs that I need, then it forces me to create rules to allow this specific connection. So this group, just so that you will be able to see, just containing the entire internal IP address ranges, and this just leaves me in a place where if I haven't defined or specifically allowed with a rule some sort of traffic, I know that the default will be that it will be blocked. This, this is something that I consider to be a little bit more secure. But now this leaves me in a point where I need to create firewall rules to allow my VPN users in and out of my LAN. So let's go ahead and do that. LAN in. And I'll call it VPN, sorry, VPN to LAN. Make sure it's on the accept action and the source. Sorry, I forgot to create a group for my VPN. Let's go ahead. I have a group that I've created from my earlier tests. It's just a group with my VPN subnet in it. So this is something that you should create on your side as well and use it in the firewall rules. Sorry. All right. LAN in. VPN to LAN source VPN destination network LAN great and straight in and creating another rule LAN in LAN to VPN in this method that I'm using firewall rules every direction needs its own uh, firewall rule that means if I'm sending an ICMP request ping to somewhere, the, the, the traffic needs to be allowed to come back. In. So I'm creating VPN to LAN and LAN to VPN. All right, so network LAN destination group VPN, sorry, and click apply. One last thing that we need to make sure that we go back and do is place this blocking rule in the lower most space that, they, that we can, because firewall rules are processed in order. So the allow rules needs to be from above. All right, our firewall rules are in place. This means that if I'll connect to my uh, VPN right now, the pinned to my access point should be allowed. Let's see, let's try. All right, looks like I'm connected just fine. Bring up the CMD and try to ping the access point once again. 
and I'm getting a reply that means that our firewall rules are actually working. They are facilitating my connection to the access point from the source and from the destination back to the source. One more thing that I want to make sure as a sanity check, I have also an IoT or a guest VLAN on that Unify site. I want to make sure that I am not able to pin any device on the guest VLAN in this site. Let's just pick this IP address, for example, 10.0.99. Uh, 214. All right, let's pin 10.0.99.214. Great, I'm not getting a reply because I haven't created a firewall rule to facilitate or allow this uh, type of traffic. That means that our VPN is working and our firewall rules are limiting the traffic to the, to the extent that I want to allow it. This is how we create a user VPN in Unify with an emphasis on security. I hope this will help you in creating uni uh, VPNs in your environment. If you like this video, please give it a like. It will help me a lot. And as always, subscribe to our channel. And I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Bye-bye.